the pin tweet on uh, on top of your uh, of your Twitter is somebody named Ian Miles Chong or I, I don't know. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, have a uh, you know who is uh, who's who's tweeting about your uh, your reaction to the Supreme Court's decision to uh, overturn. Uh, overturn Roe v. Wade, and uh, which he describes as a meltdown, and so it's been like it's it's been like the pin tweet for a month or something, and it's just like I stand by every word. Fuck boy, I think is I think yep. is the uh, I think is the exact phrase. Uh, but uh, but we have um, just the first uh, Jake. I think we have just the first like thirty seconds of that. We don't even have paid family leave. We don't even have affordable childcare in this freaking country. Okay, and the people who fight against those kinds of laws are Republicans. And yet... What do you want them to do with their kids when they have to go to work? What do you want them to do? What do you want them to do? I want them to answer that freaking question. Answer the question. Journalists, ask them the question. Ask them. Ask them. Yeah, which uh, which strikes me as a morally appropriate reaction to uh, to what the Supreme Court did. And the other thing that I really like about that is that you know it's is that what you're emphasizing is not what people usually emphasize when mm-hmm. they when they talk about this, right? You know that's uh, that there's that like you know what you're emphasizing is the way in which uh overturning abortion rights you know and and you know opening up the door for states to you know to legally you know legally require you know women to stay pregnant you know is what we're talking about is uh is a class issue that this is that this is something that uh this is this is something that uh that hurts um you know that like rich people will always find ways Right to to get whatever kind of medical care they need. Right, that's not it's something anybody really needs to lose sleep about. Right, I mean this is mm-hmm. this is you know this is really something that impacts everybody else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's so the thing that um, I I think everyone who doesn't know the history should absolutely learn it is is how issues that absolutely do negatively impact our lives, culture war issues that right-wingers engage in, you know, they, they focus on these issues because they really have nothing else to offer. And if you look at the history of the anti-abortion movement in America, it wasn't until about five years after the, uh, you know, Roe v. Wade ruling that the right-wing leaders in this country, religious leaders, started to get active and really use it as a way to galvanize right-wing religious voters in the country. Prior to that, you know, evangelical uh, evangelical voters were really getting involved or engaging in the electoral system at all. Uh, you know, they would maybe vote, uh, but they didn't act as a block and they didn't really advocate for anything. They just kind of kept to themselves. And it wasn't until uh, this pretty terrible person who actually died a pretty terrible death that I enjoy reading about, to be honest with you, Paul Weyrich, um, once he realized that he could use abortion as an issue to galvanize extreme right wing voters, that's what he focused on. And then he got all these other uh, evangelical leaders in the country to go along with it. And it became a rallying cry for them. And so for Paul Weyrich, abortion was just a tool that he could mm. utilize for his own means. What really got him riled up was desegregating schools. He hated school segregation. Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, not segregation. He loved segregation. Um, he hated integration and was actually pretty furious about the fact that these evangelical leaders who had then created their own private schools in order to continue segregation had lost their tax exempt status. He was furious about that. And so he wanted to find a way to build power among the extreme right wing in this country. And he succeeded. Abortion was never really the the goal or the focus. It was about using that issue to accumulate power. And the people who end up paying the consequences for this uh, culture war are ordinary working Americans who are already struggling to get by. The right wing talks about the decrease in the birth rate. And I mean, all you need to do is listen to what Americans have been saying, the reasons (laughs) they've been giving for why they haven't started a family. But instead of 
addressing those material needs, uh, right wingers are going to do what they do best, which is no, let's just focus on the culture war. The bread and butter issues don't matter. In fact, we need to distract from the fact that we're not doing anything about the bread and butter issues. And so here we are, uh, we're stripping people of their rights and the right wing is able to do so, even though the vast majority of Americans are, don't fall in line with what they want. Um, you know, three fourths of Americans want something different. They want women to be able to make decisions about their own bodies. Yeah, right. Which again, I, I think is why it's worth emphasizing that. I mean, there is a reason why they needed to put all their chips in the uh, in like the getting these like Federalist Society ghouls groomed for you know like rising through the court system. And doing it that way, right? You know that they uh, that like they like they get the most mileage out of the Supreme Court because that's the that's the branch of government that people uh, have the least uh, have the least democratic influence over. But I mean, I think what you what you said before that it is really important that like okay, if you actually um, I mean, and this always drives me crazy because I'll see all the you know all of these right wing culture warriors. I don't know, like you're. Uh, you know, your Jordan Peterson types, you know, will sort of talk about um, people, you know, not getting married till later, people not having kids, et cetera, as if it were a result of, I don't know, you know, feminism or some cultural something, something. Cultural or, decline. Know. They always <laughs> yeah, yeah. point to cultural decline rather than thinking about um, fighting for the conditions in which people feel comfortable and stable enough to raise a family. Like who, who, I mean, look, there are plenty of people, so sure. I, I don't want to make them feel like I'm passing judgment at all. I think people sure. who want to start families in this day and age in America are like some of the most courageous, optimistic people on the planet. But when I consider it, I'm like, who in their right mind would want to raise a family in this country that provides absolutely no support. And, you know, on one hand, you have a giant portion of the female workforce unable to go back to work because of the astronomical prices associated with childcare. And the response, the overwhelming response from every Republican, but also some corporate Democrats is, oh, they're just bums. They just want to sit around in their pajamas and they don't want to work. No, I would I would venture to say a lot of people want to work, but the conditions uh, to make it possible for them to go to work just aren't there. And neither Democrats and certainly not Republicans are doing a damn thing about it. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument to access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>